the latest exercise in israel may suggest to their peaceful existence is Sanathema to many nations from Ukraine to Israel, the Gaza Strip and West Bank, the number of displaced people apart from those killed and wounded in action continues to increase by day to day, while untold misery and anguish are brought to bear on innocent people worldwide. Condemnation of terror sounds like empty rhetoric. The present conflict in Israel is showing no sign of aborting. The chances of resolution appear grim due to a variety of reasons. This is the first time in the history of Israel that so many civilians, including women, children, have been maimed and killed, and a number of them taken as hostages. At least 8,000 Palestinians and 1,400 Israelis have died in this round of conflict that started with Hamas terrorist strike in Israel on October 7. In all probability, the purpose of this latest episode of untold violence appears to have been fulfilled to the extent of inciting outrage, apathy and determined and dedicated campaign by the Israel Defense Forces to annihilate Hamas as an organization. Human beings as mortals can easily be exterminated, but ideology and religious fanaticism are extremely difficult, if not impossible, to destroy similarly. The narrative of hatred and condemnation of one community over another may take generations to overcome unless leaders, despite personal hardship and losses, begin to visualize the value of peace and freedom for violence to rest the narrative, the ground campaign to flush and Hamas, free the hostages and exterminate its carters would only lead to mounting casualties and the very likely possibility of the conflict spreading across West Asia. Already the number of people killed in the Gaza Strip has crossed 5,000, which includes a large number of children and women. As the United States warns Iran of supporting Hamas with arms and financial aid, the possibility of any approachment between the two sides appears difficult. If this conflict spreads beyond Israel, it will not only be difficult to contain but may well prove to be catastrophic, leading to fissures in the Arab world. The need for the leaders of the region, Israel, Palestine, Jordan, Libya, Lebanon, Syria, Iran, Qatar, Saudi Arabia and the UAE to come together is not only necessary but essential under the present circumstances. The capacity and the ability of the UN to ensure peace has been circumspect. The ongoing Russian-Ukraine war only vindicates this belief. Israel has asked U.S. Secretary General Antonio Guterres to resign following his comments made at the U.N. Security Council meeting on October 24, wherein, while unequivocally condemning the terror attacks by Hamas on Israel, he also stated that these attacks did not happen in a vacuum and recalled that the Palestinian people had been subjected to 56 years of suffocating occupation by Israel. The UN Security Council has been gridlocked as usual with the US, Russia and China using their veto powers to prevent the adoption of any resolution on the conflict. An emergency session of the UN Journal Assembly on October 27, under the Uniting for Peace, Bandit voted for an immediate humanitarian truce, urging unconditional release of all captive civilians and unhindered supply of essential provisions to Gaza. The resolution, sponsored by Jordan and Russia, was voted upon with 120 nations in favor, 14 against and 45 abstaining. Most of the Arab and Islamic countries voted in favor while India substrained India, voted in favor of an unmanned proposed by Canada and backed by the US and West 
that sought to specifically condemn Hamas by name, which did not pass muster. What then is the way out? The U.S. having lost its appetite to wage wars akin to the global war on terror, post 9-11 probably, faces the toughest task of its leadership as it defines its most loyal ally, Israel. There has been no condemnation of the violence appropriated by Hamas for China, the main challenger to the U.S. This crisis therefore provides Washington a golden opportunity to not only reclaim its leadership position but also prove to its people as it enters into an election year that there is a lot that a great nation like U.S. can do for its allies and partners. Israel on its part can not persist with the policy of expanding its settlements in the West Bank and Gaza while using force and punitive measures to deny basic amenities to the people in equipped territories. A long-term view needs to be taken to grant anatomy to the Palestinian Authority and to implement a new state solution. While military hard power may have the ability to enforce or ensure peace and deter terrorism, a conclave of leaders of the Arab world under the Aggies of the U.S. leading to a large camp divide accords may turn out to be a geopolitical pivot in history that would prevent or preclude the present crisis from spiraling into an unforeseen abyss of death and destruction to give peace a chance. The forces in play must strengthen boundaries and ideologies.